Hi, and welcome back to my workshop. I'm Tony, and as you know, I'm building another tank, or well, trying to build another tank. Uh, this time it's the M26 Persian tank, again from Armatech, and again it's a one to six scale full metal kit. Um, so the last uh, session we did, it was a very, very sort of early doors, um, very easy start, so we just assembled the, the rear plate of the Persian. Um, that's uh, very straightforward. A couple of little things to, which I went over that video previously. Um, and we unpacked the bottom deck of the, the main tank and we got the bogies out and started, I installed the two sets of the twin bogies. Um, so I've got eight more bogies to install. Uh, I've already cleaned these up, uh, degreased these and I've gone ahead and for six of out of the eight of these, I fitted the, the seal, steel gaskets in these, this little sort of detail here. I've got two more of those to do. Um, but I've got a, you know, the, out of the people that are watching me and follow me, which is brilliant, uh, the two guys that are actually building this M26, uh, in, in pretty much, they're a little bit ahead of me. Um, big shout out to both Ray and Brian. Um, and it's interesting because we're, we're, we're sort of having dialogue and, and the experiences that, that we're sharing uh, is really helpful. Um, and they've given me some pointers um, ahead of the, this particular stage of the build. So one of them was the, these bogies. Um, obviously, uh, the instructions tell us to to install these at this stage um, but obviously we've got these suspension shafts or axles here which will eventually need to be be, be installed in here um, however I mean this works perfectly that goes in exactly as it should do you know and if you test it on all of them th this one is fine however this one no that's that's going to need some cleaning up and it's the same with all these so there's 12 of these, six of different types, six of each, uh, 12 of these. So I'm going to have to make sure that all 12 fit into these bogies before I install the bogies because I don't want to install the bogies and then have to mess around with that. It'd be a lot easier while they're off the actual deck. So I'm going to do that as one of the first jobs today. Um, so I'm going to go on today and install the bogies. Um, and also we're going to have, we're going to install the top hull section, which is this rather scary looking uh, diagram here but I'm sure it will be fine so that's the target for today uh, so in a minute I'll just reset the camera um, and we'll come in and I'll do a bit of cleaning up on these things I won't I won't bore you with the cleaning up I will clean these up before I do anything else um, and then we'll set the camera up so we can finish off these two bogies here and then go ahead and probably time lapse the whole installation of the bogies I keep saying the word bogies it's a great word speak soon Right, so that's all the, the, all, all the cleaning done. So with the help of a wooden dowel and some very fine grit sandpaper, I'll just wrap that round that. That then goes into the, into the hole through the bogey all the way through and obviously wrapped it a bit tighter than that. But then they just clean that, the inside of that up, give that a good blow and then just with wet, wet and dry sandpaper, clean this edge up or this axle up or suspension bar up and that goes in there lovely and it fits all 12 now fit in all of these uh, bogies so I've cleaned them all up put them back and I guess um, it's a great tip uh, from the guys that are building this because you know once you've got these installed onto the main deck um, it'll be awkward to get in and clean them like that so it's a really good idea to get these cleaned up uh, before going on to the deck so now we're just going to finish off these two last bogies I'll do this in real time and then we'll Go ahead and install them on the deck so um here just put these two little i guess these are uh, oiling points on the main tank but they don't actually do anything on this tank it's just for detailing um, i'm going to pop that in there alignment on them the water be I don't think it makes any difference but yeah I'd like them all to be the same orientation just looking at the details of the you know the build going through the book of instructions I mean there's some scary looking stuff coming up um, but um, you know I'm looking forward to it and again I'm just doing this very patiently very slowly there's no rush there's no race um, and I don't want to make any mistakes so this have all been cleaned as I said before these have been cleaned so I'm happy to to go ahead now and install these I'll do with this one I think it just 
applied a super glue to the inside of that ring and just as before just using the nozzle to spread that around always always more awkward when the camera's on align that I use my bench just to send that home and then this lends itself quite e quite well really because this is a flat surface then I'm going to just excuse the camera it's going to bounce a bit but and that's in there perfectly next one or last one it's another dirty horrible day here in the UK I don't know when we're ever going to see the sun again but I'm not complaining because it's a great opportunity to come out here and you know just see the owls fly past while I'm building this amazing tank so I'll just pop that before using the bench push that down And that's that. So all eight bogies are ready to go on to the main deck. Um, and I will I'll, I'll do that, but I'm going to film this and speed it up because um, you saw me install the double bogies. They're just out of uh, shot at the moment, but you saw me install those in the previous videos. And then when I've installed all these, I'm going to mark them up and identify them according to the instructions. So the right, when I come to do the torsion bars, I don't get miss, you know, I don't get carried away and, and install the wrong torsion bar to the wrong uh, bogey. So I'll do that, um, and then I'll I'll be, I'll be back. So we're going to speed all this up and um, reset the camera, and we'll speed this up, and then uh, I'll talk to you once we get to the end of it. Right, we're all set up, ready to the uh, do the installation of these eight bogies. Um, not going to to sort of do this in real time because I think it will just uh, send you all to sleep. However. Um, I have cleaned these up, these are ready to go in, they're going to get lined up and installed one by one and I've studied the instructions and they don't seem, I mean look, they, there's only one way these can go in so don't worry about getting them the wrong way um, because there's literally just one, only one place they can go um, and obviously I've cleaned all these up uh, where I needed to clean the edges, they all go in nicely um, so now I'm going to just start installing this and speed the entire process up.
that's it. That's the lower deck um, complete with all its bogies. Um, kind of awkward because of the way, um, just the way you access it. And, but I found that um, as I had a couple of these bogies on, on the bottom, I was able to stand it up and it had a bit of support on it. So it was actually a little bit easier to work on. So this is an awkward one just because the amount of fixings required um, but other than being a little bit awkward, really straightforward and just quite repetitive. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take hold of the instructions, have a good read of those, have a look at how I'm going to build up the hull, go and get all my components for the hull, and uh, I'll be straight back. So I've tracked down all the parts that we're going to need for this section um, of the build, which is page three. Can you believe it already? Page three of the hull assembly. Um, now, unlike the Tiger, um, there's more components to build up the, the hull. Um, you have the main forward section here, the longer section, and the rear section here. They get connected together. Um, I'm guessing it's poss possibly as the, the original tank was built. I don't know, but I'm following the instructions. Um, and then they get connected together with a, a little connecting bracket, which is connected on the inside. This is currently the outside of the tank. So this is thinner. This, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but I'll do it the opposite way around. But you can actually see that there's a different thickness in material. This rear plate is thinner than the front plate. So I've orientated them the way they should be, I think, according to the instructions. And I just think that trying to build this onto the on the deck itself could be fiddly um, because of the amount of components. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect these two together, as it says in the instructions, and there's a smaller of the connecting brackets. The longer, there's another longer one, but that connects the main forward plate here to the, the front hull section here. Um, and I'm just thinking at least while I've got it on my bench, I can keep this nice and level rather than trying to fiddle about on the, uh, on, you know, on the tank itself, on the deck. So the first, the first fixing goes through the thicker of the two is a 20 mil countersunk M4 and then a 16 mil goes through the thinner plate. And now I'll present those. I'm going, to put, I'm going to put flat side against the, of the bracket against the hull. And then you have an M4 nut that goes on the end of that. I'm going to put some thread locker on this. Just wind that on with my finger to start with. And using the correct socket, just wind that, just not too tight. I'm going to keep it nice and loose. Then present this and pop the 16 mil countersunk M4 fixing through that. Just get the nut on there to start with. And get the thread locker on that. Don't know why I'm really quite apprehensive about this section because I just don't want to, you know, as I said, in the very early stages, I, I really want to do this tank justice. So I'm not going to tighten these up just yet. I just want to get them in that, roughly in that position they're going to go. And I can see that they're, I'm going to just hold them in place like that. They're nice and tight. And now I'll use a, an Allen screwdriver on the back of that to hold that while I tighten that up. That's nice and tight. Just making sure that that's in and it is. I, don't, I was thinking about putting my big sash clamp on that but I don't think I need to and it's really nice and flush on the top here. So again not sure how I'll do that on the tank or, or the deck so I think I'm doing the right thing but you know who knows time will tell so that's on there nice and tight so that's effectively 
that connected together. And you can see that there's a the thickness, the difference in the thickness of the material. That is intentional. So now I'm thinking if I put a block of wood underneath that. And then I don't know if you remember these pieces, these are the sprocket mounts. I'll unpack these and just phenomenal. Now this they're in they're in two parts they've been bolted together and it does say on here um uh these these parts are supplied pre-assembled disassembly is not recommended I, I don't even know why you'd want to why would you want to um okay so that's the the main and, and then there's there's a right way and a wrong way to put this and i think this is the the right way <laughs> so this positions itself on there and at least again I'm thinking if I put this on those those holes are nicely aligned if I put this on now surely it's got to be easier for me to install it onto the the deck again I might live to regret that but um hey ho so that's flush on the top there that's exactly looking at the diagram yes double checking so I'm going to commit and it does say uh, what are the fixings required for these? So all fasteners on this particular piece are M416, so that it's shorter of the fixings. So that tells me that, clearly obvious in the instructions, that all the fixings just in this piece are the 16mm ones, the shorter of the two. I'm guessing because that is, because this is a thinner material. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do, I'm going to do that. No, I'm not. Changing my mind. Just super nervous about this particular part. Don't want to mess anything up. So at the moment, I'm just gonna. I know that one of the builders I'm talking to has suggested that some of these holes are the thread on the holes are not great. I think they've had to tap them. Finding might have the similar kind of problem. Do you, I don't want to, so I'm going to have to, I think, go along with what the chaps are talking to me on there on my channel telling me that these they're going to have to be tapped out. No problem, I just so happen to have a tap kit, so um, I'm going to have to stop the build for now. Um, I'm going to tap these out, I'll film that. Um, and then at least we've got a decent threaded receptor for the fixings. Right, so I've loaded up my, my little tap with a 4mm M4. Now I'm lucky, I've actually had one of these kits for a while. So um, if you are about to embark on a build like this, uh, it's something I didn't have a problem with on the Tiger. Um, but this is the first problem of its kind on this. And it has all, as I said, has also been flagged by a couple of the other builders that are uh, building the M26. So um, reasonably priced, um, very easy to get hold of, not an expensive tool. Um, I just happen to have a set here that goes up, I think, to 10 mil. Um, but this is perfect for what I want to do. Now, normally, if I'm, if I'm going to do something like this on steel, um, I'd use a cutting compound. I don't think I need to do it because this is aluminium. Um, so what we'll do now is I'm just going to very, very carefully start tapping I've already done the first one so because of the tip of this it will find itself locating reasonably reasonably straight just slowly turn that now prior to um, tapping these holes I did try and drive the screw in and it just wouldn't go so this is definitely something that's going to be required just move that swarf and take let's see if this works now <clears throat> yeah that's going in nice it's going in as as it should Needs a bit more. Yep. Yeah. 
I don't know how you would do this if it was on the tank itself. So I'm really pleased I've decided to go the way I'm going about it. And I'm hoping this is isolated and we don't get any more of these requirements. Because while it's flat on the bench, it's actually easier to do. Just do the last one now. I think I'm gonna have to do this to the other side as well, no doubt. You know, actually, you know, I guess if you've got the tools and you've used them before and you're quite comfortable using tools like this, then, you know, this is, it's a little bit frustrating, but adds to the, the build, I think. As I've said many times, I think I'd be disappointed if it was just a huge, big, easy to bolt together Meccano set. It's far from that. And you know some work art is required, but I think that adds to the the pleasure, if you like, and the sense of achievement that you get at the end of it. Let's see if that goes in, and it goes in lovely. That's exactly as it should be. So well worth doing. And good, a very good heads up from the guys building this and following my channel. So, do appreciate that, guys. I thought I might have, got, I might have been lucky, but it seems that um, <clears throat> it's an issue with the, well, this certainly this kit and the uh, the other two guys building have had a similar problem. So I'll just park that away for now. <clears throat> my tap away for now. Inevitably going to need to use that. And then we'll go back to where we were. So I'll reposition that. So that's flush along that point, flush on the top. There. And we're gonna go again. I won't put, um, <clears throat> I won't tighten these up too much until I've got all three in position. And then I'm going to hopefully offer it into the position on the deck and see if what I'm doing here is correct. Again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm using thread locker on these because I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm reasonably confident, but if it turned out that I had to take it all apart again. Very easy way of doing that. If you've got a hot air gun, uh, just direct the heat directly onto the fixing, and that softens the the thread locker just enough to be able to let's just position that in to release the fixing without damaging anything. And what I don't want to do is not put the thread locker on because I'm worried about I might have to take it apart and then end up getting so far up the build that it's going to be i forget to do the thread locker and these fixings i think are going to have to be thread locked because again I've said before the vibration that this tank will undergo once it's operational will possibly end up driving these fixings out so we don't want to do that just making sure that that is flush because there's a little bit of give on this happy with that tight but not don't be silly don't don't uh, round off the fixing just keep a very good control of that <clears throat> so that's it that bit anyway I mean it's got a bit of weight to it feels solid enough so what I'll do now is I'll um, 
before I go ahead and do the other side, I want to make sure that this actually does fit as I, I expect it does, hopefully, onto the deck. So I'll just uh, reset the camera and I'll get on with that. Right, so just about ready to, to uh, offer up the, the, the this whole section, side section, onto the main deck. Um, and I just thought I'd explain what I've done here. I've written on these bogies the order of the um, torsion bars so that, again, just in case I get carried away and I forget which torsion bar goes to which hole, um, I think it's important that um, you know I, I, I don't lose track of that. So um, the, the, that's clearly labelled in the instructions when you come down to this part, but it's just that once the whole sides go on and I get you know, start getting build up, it just be a little bit awkward to get to this. So anyway, that's why I've done that. So I'm going to now offer up the the whole side of this section onto. And wow, well, okay, well that fits. Wow, that fits better than I thought. Um, right, so it just has to be offered up to the to the fixing holes and line these up. But just eyeing it out at the moment, it looks pretty. It looks okay. Right, so I'm gonna, I will start fixing these. Now these pretty much are all 20 mil M4 countersunk fixings, apart from the end one down here, which is a 16 mil, which I think this is the one that goes into the, um, yeah, I think this one goes into the, the front main whole section. But I'm only gonna put these in loosely for now, because it needs to have a little bit of movement and a little bit of tolerance. Um, why everything sort of kind of connects up. So just want to get these on and in, but very loosely, and I'm going to double check. So actually, let's not get carried away, Tony. The first fixings are the 16 mil, which goes into the thinner, thinner of the two plates down here. So we've got three, and that's off, that's gone in there, lovely. It fits in there like a dream. Right. Just going to offer that nut on and then I'll do the uh, thread locker. Oh, actually, oh, here we go. I won't put thread lock on it just yet. I'll wait and then I'll have to do that as a. Just want to get these just, just loosely on. And that's the reason to keep them loose so you can jiggle it about. I was thinking about putting some washers on these, but I think the thread locker will do the job. That's the last of the 16 mil ones. Again, just because they're all loose, it enables me to, to guide that in. Now we're on to the 20 mil. Fixing going through the thicker plate. Not sure if that's coming. You can see that presented through there on the camera. I've zoomed out so you can see the the whole thing. One thing that strikes me is it um, this is a lot narrower than the hull of the tiger. Um, straight away, I'm just looking at it, going, it's it's actually a, you know it's a narrower gauge if you like, or narrow width. Than, than the tiger um, but obviously it's got the tracks to go on and the mud guards and all the rest of it um, and although I'm, I just had my grandchildren in here wondering what the what is granddad doing now and when I said there's another tank <laughs> um, for a start again it doesn't look anything like a tank and I make them right at this stage it, it doesn't but um, I'm I think like I did with a tiger and I think you'll feel the same if you get one of these kits. When you first get the kit, even though I've built a Tiger, I'm not an advanced builder. And if you, have to, if, if, if you, if you end up approaching this without being a little bit anxious, um, I think you're going to make a mistake. I think it's only normal and natural to feel anxious about tackling a project of this nature and scale. But even in this early stage, I'm really starting to kind of connect with the tank, you know. 
it's a wonderful learning curve um, having never really had much uh, knowledge or certainly background about a Pershing tank I'm beginning to and I love the fact that as you begin to build it you begin to learn about it and you and, and every step step by step your your confidence builds slowly um, the the concerns that you have as long as you know you've taken your time studied the instructions are way ahead of the, the game study them again um, and take your time you will not make that many mistakes and as I said in the past if you do make mistakes you know you can go back That's penultimate fixing on this side and I think this is one more to go in <laughs> I've shortchanged myself a nut I've not counted out the nuts I've just left them let loosely on in the tray um, for this right so that's that side on as I said I'm keeping it loose because obviously you've got the rear plate to go in here um, and then you have the huge big front hull section to go on um, and I think you, if you, as long as the fittings are on and it's, if it's loose it allows you a little bit of tolerance to move everything around so I'm glad I went about it the way I have so far so my recommendation is assemble this side plate and this sort of sprocket mount on your bench have it as one assembly and then mount it onto this deck so I'm going to crack on um, and probably speed up the rest of the build of this hole and only sort of slow down and, and going back into real time when we come to possibly fix the uh, the main sort of front hole section on. So I'll, um, I'll catch up with you very soon. Right, okay, so that's the, the hole loosely assembled. Um, now I'm just looking at the front section of this hole here. Um, I'm just going to test, offer it up into its position. So it's, it's so supposed to be going around about sort of there. However, I can see a couple of things I'm going to have to do to this. So we have... <clears throat> So we have these connecting brackets which then which connects this front section of the hull to the side of the hull but because of the casting and I'll see if I can show you that because of the casting this it, it this is, has got a ridge on it here so I'm gonna have to because that's gonna that's actually gonna make that fixing rock and I really don't like that because I just don't think you can get a decent fixing on it so I don't think that's too much of a problem. I'm just probably just going to file that off. Um, and then the only other thing is on this side, there's a from the mold, you can see there's a bit of a overspill from the mold. So I don't really want that because it's not on this side. Um, so I'm going to have to just file that off as well. And then once I've done that, I should be able to offer this back into position and bolt it together loosely, of course. Um, hoping that we don't encounter any other problems. Right, so that's that, it's all cleaned up. Not too much work really. Now this will sit 
in that position there and I will try and move the camera so you can see how this comes together but I mean it's just I can't, again, I'm, I'm sort of, it, it's narrower than the Tiger, but I think it's longer than the Tiger in its, in its hole anyway. But um, already there's a, there's a weight to this. Um, so what I've done is I've gone out and got another motorcycle jack because I used, the, the first one I, I invested in is used uh, to keep the Tiger elevated. I was uh, talked before about keeping the tracks off the, you know, to keep the weight off the torsion bars. Um, so I've gone out and invested another um, small amount of money. They're not expensive. And I can see this um, coming into play very quickly. So we'll finish this section off here, but I will work out a better angle for the camera so you can see that. All right, so hopefully you can see a bit better that. Um, so first things first, I'm just going to offer this into its position. So the main bulk of the hull itself, this top section, sits on top of the aluminium deck and that feels right. And then that just rocks back into that position there, uh, ready for bolting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these connector bolts on. Um, again, I'm going flat to the, to the subject material. Um, and then we've got a couple of fixings go through the hull of the tank we're just checking that you can see that and then that one goes in there like so and then the fixing bracket like that and again i'm glad of glad i've done what i did because um does that, does that make sense in english i don't know um by filing that to the cast material off i'm able to get the the bracket flat to this surface on the inside as I'm not sure how you'd you'd get a really good strong fix I'm just putting that on there loosely just to hold it while I position this one I don't think it's as fiddly as I'm making it out to be. I think I've just been um, <laughs> sausage finger syndrome coming into play again. That's it, that's on there. So I'm just going to keep that loose, just loosely fixed that side while I do the same this side. if you can see those coming through there so bracket I think I'll just make it look difficult. <laughs> That's that. Again, it's all very, very loose at the moment, but I think that's the right way to do it because imagine if this has all been rigidly fixed, you need a lot of tolerance to, be able to move these huge, big, heavy pieces around. Okay, that's on there loosely. Be looking to fix those just yet just while we suss out now there's another fixing to go through on the bottom there which is the 16 mil fixing and that'll go like that and hold that nice and tight together so i think that's the next thing i'm going to do now ahead of doing this i did test this fixing on the cast they seem to be fine. Actually, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Sorry, I forgot the old thread locker there. This is definitely going on here. Stay back and 
get that to line up. So it's found it's found the hole. At least I think it has. Yes it has. And I'm gonna wind that in tight. Now that's on. So with this side, yeah that looks good. And now I'm gonna just tighten these ones up so thread locker at the ready. Push that in tight while we get that on. Might go back and do a bit more on that. I think that looks all right. Feels right. And we'll do the same one here. Now you're not going to see this, but um, it's exactly the same process, but mirrored. So 16 mil M4 countersink in the bottom. Just using my hands to hold that together. It looks tight, looks good, it's a good fit which is incredible really I mean I know they obviously build prototypes at Armatex factory and before they go into full production but just to be able to consistently get this right on so many kits it is impressive fitting as well as the other side. I'm just going to slacken that one off ever so. That's better. Just got to put the fixings in the bottom and these are cap hand fixings i think pretty sure yeah m416 no they're not they're countersunk fixings so there are more so this is going to have to go on its side there we go three fixings through here and they're the these are the 16 mil countersunk fixings which I haven't prepared let's go and find those Like I said um, in my first video, I think, I've got all the fixings laid out, obviously outside of camera, but in its M3, M4, M2.5, and, and then pins and what have you. It just makes life so much easier when, um, when trying to find them. So this is a 16 mil M4 countersunk fixing going in underneath. And there'll be a corresponding nut, which is 
there. I won't tighten that up just yet. Let's get the others. So, I know I did a video about tools required to do a kit like this. Um, so apologies if I hadn't picked up things like um, you know, a little tap and die set. I don't think you need to die, certainly think you do need to tap. Um, so apologies for that, I wouldn't have noticed that um, at the time. I also failed to talk about the fact that I've got a... Yeah, a couple of other sort of tools that are used in the in the production or they'll make make it a tiger and that was my little dremel kit um but you know these are the tools that um hand tools that that armatech recommend but uh, you know through just sort of experience i don't know if i'm going to use the dremel on this um purging tank yet but it's a brilliant tool if you if you're doing a tiger i'd recommend it um, I'd recommend it having in your your arsenal of tools anyway, because um, just a phenomenal tool. So, so that's that. I'm just going to hold that nut there, tighten it up from this side, and that's going in lovely. Considering I was so apprehensive about starting this particular part of the build, this has gone really well. Um, probably too well. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be more challenges on the way. Obviously, having to tap out the holes wasn't expected, but you know, uh, fortunately, it's, um, it's something I do have in my book of tools or a bag of tools, so to speak. So that is that. Now, oh, I found a missing nut. Good. Um, so that's it. I've got. You know, this all needs to be tightened up a little bit, but I've left it loose at the back because the rear the rear plate needs to go on so um so far so good so i'll just reset the camera again and um we'll look at the back right i've turned the tank on its side because this hole uh, needs to be bolted to the this deck underneath here um i've also got my grandchildren in the workshop with me all right guys um and uh, so anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this clamp to pull the body and the deck together to allow me to, it's all right, you don't have to be, you, you've been really good. Um, and then I'm going to actually get some thread locker on that. We'll get the first one in. And these are eight mil countersunk. M4 fixings. What is it? Oh, okay, darling, I'll pick that up. That's all right, they've been very good. They've been really quiet like little mice. You don't have to be very good. You don't have to be quiet as little mice. It's very hard to be on quiet, is it? <laughs> well, I think that's what you, your age. That's what you. That's your job. To be quiet. No, to make noise and interact and have fun. And that's that bolted in there. And then I'm just going to do the same. And this is getting really heavy now very quickly this has become really tricky to handle that's for cleaning my hands you, you don't want it on your hands if you've got clean hands you don't want it on your hands yeah. no not really you'll be all right yes Building my tank. What? Our tank? Well, yeah. 
Our tank. What, yeah. my tank? Well, yes, I guess so, one day. Could be my tank. Could be, yes. It could be, yes. Yeah. It's a blue one. <laughs> the blue one? Wait, who's that old one? Hang on. Who's that old one? Who's that on the quad? Yeah. That's you and Sophia. Who Oops. So, just... Finish the nap piece off. That that gets that deck fixed. I'm ready to now put the the rear plate on. And you can see. So that's the whole all fixed to the deck. Now just the last piece of this session will be. Um, attaching the rear plate onto the rear of the tank. Um, now it's got a couple of cleats or fixing cleats that need to go there. Um, I found these. Now just a just a bit of a tip really. So what I do is when I go through these multiple bags so you find that some of these components are packed with other components. So when I found some parts I open the bag up um, and if there's a part like this, for instance, this cleat here, which is going to use to protect or, or fix this back plate on, I just uh, sort of masking tape, close the bag shut so it doesn't fall out. Um, and it's still got, you know, the code on the front of the bag to allow me to locate these particular items. It's just so that when you open one of these bags, sometimes you're going to need some of the stuff or half the components or just one or two of the components. Um, make sure that you seal the bag up and put it back in its bag and there's two bags if you like of um, fixings um, so that one's done that bag's done with um, and these are the two cleats that are going to need to be installed to support this back part here so these are just the looks of it they are the little m8 or sorry m4 8 mil cap fixings so these hopefully nice and easy again i'm not gonna tighten these up completely so it's the longer so that's obviously the left one and this is the right one so that the the slot is at the top oh, well, that's what I, at least what i can interpret from the um the instructions anyway so it just goes on there And leave that reasonably i'm going to leave it i know i'll put a bit of thread locker on it but it will be fine for now and that just gives me a bit of play and i probably won't put the thread locker on this one I'm leaving that one at the top that so there's um, a threaded hole let me bring this in the camera sorry there's a threaded hole on either end of here which will then be the receptacle holes for the fixings from the back of this and then there's three fixings down here and it looks like they're all the same all threaded and all the M4 caps, the 8mm caps again, that go into the back of that. So nice and easy. So I'm going to fix one of those loosely. And again, I probably won't put the thread locker on just yet. Now I understand that this back plate will have to be loosened off at some point when the motion packs 
go in and that's because the gears or the drive gears need to be installed and need a bit of space to be able to there's a there's a there's a part of this that's been obviously been machined out at the back and the only thing i can think of that's for would be for to facilitate the the drive motors um and one thing that keeps going through my mind is how easy is it going to be to install all the the kit on this particular tank because actually all the option packs themselves are reasonably straightforward on the tiger because you get quite a good access through the top of the tiger's hull so i'm just going to just tighten these up loosely not too tight and i've decided not to put any thread locker on these just yet this will be something i do later in the build this is just so i can get this into position so I can put those fixings on the bottom now this first one by hand this is slightly awkward that's it that's got it that's why you've got to keep all this relatively loose otherwise if you try and fix all these things tight you've got no tolerance to move and it'll be a nightmare So today's gone quite well really considering um i mean this is all i'm going to do on this session i will go around in a moment and just put thread locker on the on the fixings and tighten these side fixings of the hole up i'm leaving this slightly loose at the back um because it does somewhere in the instructions i seem to recall it asking you to do that and that's as i said it's something to do with when you come to, it's to facilitate the uh, the install of the of the motors so what i'll do is i'll finish off here i'll go around and i'll tighten up all these fixings um, and i'll do my sign off to camera very shortly so that's the hole all built up um, really pleased with today's session uh, a few little hiccups as uh, as we went over in the session and we've covered um, so as you can see here you can see the stamp this is the Armatec stamp of authenticity um, you can see there this tank was created in 2022 and this is number 27 off the production line quite like that being the m26 and this is the 27th tank they've produced um, yeah really really pleased with that um, ahead of the next session i'll put it up on this motorcycle jack now because it just helps get around the tank because this is now getting really really heavy um, i mean it's still manageable but it won't you know it won't be long before this becomes same as a tiger um, quite you know awkward to deal with um, but at least with the jacket makes it like nice and easy one thing i will say is yeah, i think this is going to be longer than the tiger but certainly not as wide as the tiger but early days um, so the next session will be looking to install the suspension arm systems and the torsion bar system sorry uh, which is the the next you know you know multiple pages um, but at the same time i've got to start thinking about prepping this tank and getting it painted because i want to get the hull painted and i want to get these arms painted uh masked off the bits i'm not going to paint ahead of doing any more work to this tank because you get to a certain point where you've put so much on it it's so difficult to paint and get a coverage of it so i think this is about the right stage in my eyes anyway for uh, priming and painting so that'll be part of the next um sort of series of work that we do so that's it for today um I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it immensely. Um, I'm so thrilled to be building another tank. Um, again, my name's Tony. Uh, I'm trying to build another tank. Thank you for joining me. And if you like this, thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you soon.